Hello and welcome here to the Singapore Open, the first Singapore Open of the new season, the 2018 season. My name is Matthew Hui and, and I'm, I'm joined Jen. by my co-commentator, co Justin. Yeah. And we are here at ITE College Central as part of the Campus Game Fest event. Mm -hmm. Two, as pointed out, this is the first Singapore Open, the first special event of the year. And essentially the, the one big opportunity for players, in not just in Singapore, but around the region, around the entire Oceania region, to... Uh, yeah, and we have many different um, players from different countries even, uh, Australia, um, the Malaysia even from our neighbouring country. So, um, not just the local players, so it's a rather big event. I believe we have uh, 58 players here today as well uh, for a tournament of six Swiss rounds, best of three each. Yeah, the big draw here is, as pointed out, this will be the essentially the only big event in the Oceania region before the cutoff for stipends. To, to travel to the Oceania Internationals next year. Yeah, not only that, it's I believe one of the last tournament, one of the last major tournaments to have still use the 2017 rule set before uh, Ultra Sun and Moon, which will begin, I believe, next year. Yes, it yeah. will be this Singapore Open and our next, the first Malaysia Open as well. Yeah, next Comics month Fiesta. In Kuala yeah. Lumpur at the Comics Fiesta. These will be the two big events that will still utilize the 2017 format. Mm -hmm. And after that, we will be moving on to Ultra Sun and Moon, which uh, launched yesterday. Yeah. As I'm sure most of you, if not all of you, would have known about. Yeah, I think the the, the, the turnout here today would have been a lot bigger if the release hadn't came yesterday. Because uh, I believe a lot of players would be playing Sun and Moon rather than come down to our tournament. But for those players that come down, I, I believe it's a bit of a last, um, sort of a last Hail Mary to try and get um, that points. Especially before the rule set changes. Also, the first prize today is a, a Nintendo Switch. And uh, that's a very pretty attractive prize up for grabs. Definitely. And our round one is going to be a visitor from uh, Germany, I believe. Mm. Heike Marvin Gilcher. He'll be playing against our very own, well, he's been he's been away for a while. I believe mean, he was studying in Australia, but now he's back in Singapore. Yep. It is Daniel Yao. And the teams here, uh, Ike's team will be the Tapu Koko, Tapu Fini, Arcanine, Mandibus, Gachom, and the Genga. And on Daniel's side, we have the Tapu Fini, the Tapu Koko, Gachom, Arcanine, Whimsicott, and the Celestila. Uh, you know, just for ease of reference, I'm just going to call Dan Daniel Danny. It's, it just rolls off the tongue better, and I'm quite used to it already. Yeah, if, right from team review, we see the uh, similar call four on both sides. Mm. It's going to be the Tapu Koko, Tapu Fini, Gashom, and the Akanai. Yeah, the only differences would be the Mandibus Gengar versus the Whimsicott Celestila. Um, so it'll be interesting to see whether they want to change things up. The Whimsicott is also interesting on Danny's side. It'll be nice to know whether it's just a pure support or it's carrying that Z-Crystal to um, fire off a move the, which is change, changes its type based on the terrain. Um, yeah, ferry Danny's or electric team here. composition does hint at that. He has both the electric and the uh, misty terrain mm. to In utilize both the single tackle and the gigabolt havoc. In terms of speed as well, both of them have tailwind options, Medibus and Whimsicott respectively. So... We'll see what both players decide to go for in the first round here. Um, try to feel each other out for information, I, I, I assume. Yeah, I might, might want to think about keeping Mandibus at the back as a potential switching to any Winnipeg's shenanigans if he thinks the Z-Nature power is coming. Yeah, because Dark Types now uh, not affected by Prankster, so Winnipeg's uh, attacks uh, Z-Move will fail if he decides to go for it. And we do see the Mandibus Arcanine, so he chooses to leave the Mandibus here. Right, so uh, Danny does lead with the Electric Terrain and Tapu Koko. So mm. the potential Gigabolt Havoc from both of his Pokemon really, we're not entirely clear where the Crystal is as of yet. Could be on the Koko, and the ZZ Normalium could also be on the Whimsicott. Yeah, uh, as you earlier mentioned, Manibus does not really fear the Whimsicott, but if Koko has his own um, Electric Crystal, it could easily take out the Manibus before it can act. Yeah, especially since the Manibus did not get its own seed activation, since Ike chose not to bring his Tapu Fini, if, as we assume, the Manibus does carry the Misty Seed. Yeah, so I believe I will have to respond accordingly. Perhaps switching out the Mandibus? Or he's going to make a very risky play by keeping it and setting up Tailwind. Yes, because if he does suspect the Z-Crystal is on the Whimsicott, his Mandibus is actually fairly safe still. Mm, unless Tapu Koko is holding the choice packs. Mm. Well, if he does switch in the Fini for the Arcanine... Um, he removes a lot of the threat actually. Yeah, you reduce, you remove the Electric Terrain. Um, and activate a Seed. Yeah, and you change the uh, the, the terrain as well, so the Normalium Z will turn into Fairy. But instead, he chooses to bring in his Garchom. So, really fearing the electric attack going into the Garchom. Uh, and into it's going the to be the Z Normalium going Ooh. into... He can't be throwing into the Mandibus, right? I'm sure Danny does know that uh, Prankster attacks do not affect Dark types. Well, we'll see. He should be going into the... Okay. He goes into the Garchom, which was the Mandibus, which would have been unaffected by 
the Prankster attack anyway. Yeah, and Coco Denny, goes for Skype Denny drop. maybe making a really hard read on something else switching in. Maybe the Fini onto the Manny Bar slot. That's, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, this could become Twinkle Tackle. Yeah, so it's not very. I believe it's not very effective. Yeah. The worst part is that if Denny doesn't already know it, he still won't know it because the attack went into the Gachom and not the Manny Bus. Yeah, so he'll probably still think that, oh, you know, um, it was just a switch in that caused my um, Z, Z move to fail here. Um, and he blew and he blew the element of surprise immediately from turn one. Mm -hmm. He does reveal Tailwind here, giving his team a speed advantage for the next few turns. And well, he does actually burn the sky drop turn as well. But uh, the offense here is on Iker's side. Here. And Gachom can just go for the Tabu Coco. Yeah. As it does. The the Tectonic Rage coming in, the Tabu Coco unable to protect this turn or switch out. Yeah, because, because of the sky drop. Sky. Yes. And Arcanine also free to fire off attack into the Coco slot in case it doesn't go down. Uh, it should go down, and if the Flare Blitz goes into the Whimsicott, I think that's an easy kill as well, as the Whimsicott has shown the item as well. Yeah, that goes Tectonic Rage, barring a Poker Sash on the Tapu Coco. Ah, I think that's unlikely. Eventually, oh, it's actually, actually it's really been broken. From what? Earlier. Oh, Life Form? Sky Drop? I think that's likely. And it goes for the Snarl here. Oh, Flare Blitz will have accomplished a lot more, I feel. But, well, Whimsicott's special attack is lowered. And especially since we know it is the offensive variant. Mm, yeah, it could, it could, the special attack drop could mean a lot here. If he packs something like a, a Moon Blast. Well, we do know it carries the nature power, so probably can Thunderbolt. Or now it is Moon Blast. Able to hit the Gachom, though. Super without effective. the Z Crystal, it's not going to be enough to take it out. Mm -hmm. Good damage, though, nonetheless. Actually, since he now knows that it is the Z Crystal Gachom. So no potential assault vest. Yeah, and despite the um, some of the losses that Danny has suffered, um, the Z crystal being wasted. And the uh, tailwind, but he does have tailwind now. Yeah, uh, th this this sort of scenario is actually pretty good for him because uh, the Fini and the Winscott actually can do quite a lot of work against the Arcanine and Gachom here respectively. Gachom goes switch out. Yeah, Iker recognizes perhaps. that. Yeah. So it's gonna be his own Tapu Fini. Perhaps looking to take up a money water. Well, it's gonna be a double switch and Manibar's gonna come in and activate this what we expect to be a uh, Misty Seed. Yep, it is the Misty Seed, gonna boost his special defense, gonna take a Moonblast fairly comfortably. Uh, oh, Moonblast should be going into the Fini here because that was the Arcanine slot going out. So uh. then he's revealing that he has both the Moonblast and the Nature Power. Yep, As Muddy Water goes off, no misses here. I don't think he's gonna do a lot of damage, but will we see any accuracy, accuracy drops? Drop here yeah. Onto Ooh. the Tapu Fini. So now his own Muddy Water is gonna be very inaccurate. Hmm. But a nice double switch from Iker here. Yeah, he does waste a turn of Tailwind. And then he's still stuck with a uh, with lower special attack. Mm. Though his Fini, based on the damage, I think could be holding the choice specs. But it's now locked into Muddy Water and not yeah, Moonblast. A bit of an unfortunate. If Danny could have Moonblast, I think uh, double from his. Oh, no, but his Wimsicott's special attack is lower as well. So I'm not even sure he can take out. Reveals the Protect on the Tapu Fini on Iker's side. As Wimsicott will go for another Moonblast. To the Mandy Bus here. Not gonna do a lot with the special defense boost and special attack. On the bright side, at least he went for the Moon Blast and not the Nature Power. Actually, that was. Oh, that's a Nadi Water Water. Yeah, yep. pointed out he is locked into Muddy Water. And Mandy Bus should easily take that and set up Tailwind. Could. Have his accuracy lower? Nope. Gonna be Tailwind, gonna match the Tailwind. And then his Tailwind is fast expiring. Yes. Although Mandy Bus now, you have to wonder what exactly can he do on the field here. Um, Snarl perhaps to lower more special attacks? Yeah, probably not gonna do much to either of these two. Snarl would be useful, though now we're about to find out which of the two Phoenix is, uh, is the faster one. Now that both sides have Tailwind. So Dennis is about to expire at the end of next turn. Huh. I mean, is it really safe to leave the Whimsicott alone like this? Well, it's, it has lower special attack. That's the thing here. <laughs> Denny trying to switch moves there. Unfortunately, the, the Minibus has not used knockoff on it. And I, I doubt we will. It, it, it won the... We need to keep locking itself into muddy water. Whimsicott revealing his last move, a uh, protect there. I'm interested to see why he protected the Whimsicott there. Ooh, and his Fini is actually naturally faster. Okay. Well, we do see it is the choice one. He is the choice specs variant. So he does get an advantage from being investing speed. Ooh, Thorn coming Thorn out. coming out to the Whimsicott. But Whimsicott only has Tailwind. I suppose he could set up next turn. So yeah, yeah. I, I try to deny the Tailwind going up next turn. And we do see a Moonblast not missing despite the reduced accuracy. As Danny's Tailwind peters out here. Yeah, but then he should be able to reset it with his music god, since that's kind of the only thing he's doing on the field yeah, right uh, now. Yeah, Iker does have one turn to take advantage of this though, so he has Tailwind up, which means he could double into the Fini and potentially take it out. It's not going to protect because it is choice but locked. Doubling into the Fini with Mandy Blast doesn't, doesn't really accomplish much. Well, based and on... And we do see the first Moonblast only doing around 
40%. Yeah. So if anything, I think Danny should be taking this chance to bring in the Gachom. Huh, assuming he does have it at the back though. We haven't we seen have his seen last. It. He let it. He technically raged with it. No, no, Iker, you mean. Oh, Iker, uh, sorry, yeah. yeah. And we do see Tailwind. And Roost! Oh, he does have the Roost. So taking the advantage to burn turns of Tailwind, even, even on Danny's side. As he will get his own Moonblast off with his Tapu Fini. Into Danny's own Tapu Fini. Hoping to. Oh, oh Wings Record, actually. Shot. Okay. It's gonna be a two hit knockout, it looks like. Another special attack draw. <laughs> Minus two now, I believe. And Muddy Water will connect once yeah, again. Danny has yet to miss the Muddy Water, so luck on his side thus far. But for that matter, Ike hasn't missed the Moon Blast, even though he has accuracy reduced. Well, we have seen the Medibus has rules, but slowly, Iker's Tapu Fini is being slowly chipped away here. Yeah, we do know, at this point, we, at this point he's pressed uh, Muddy Water, I think, four times in a row. It's safe to assume he is locked into it. Mm. And the Whimsicott has shown all four moves. So, while Danny does look like he's getting some mileage out of his attacks, Iker has recovery and potentially even a barrier on his Tapu Fini, mm. whereas Danny has no such out on his side. Yeah, but Danny... Could easily take out the Fini here if he decides to double into it. No goes for the many pass instead with the Moon Blast. You see another Muddy Water and many pass. Oh, oh a double avoid. With the double avoid there. How play comes out into the many Whimsicott? Well, Whimsicott doesn't carry much attack at all. Yeah. As another Moon Blast comes out, is he doubling into the Whimsicott? No, into the Fini there. And oh, actually another one would take it out. And well, he has to set up Tailwind once again. I'm a bit concerned about Iker's Tapu Fini's health. If Danny doubles into it, I think he's going down. If he doubles it into it, I think he activates a berry. Oh, that is true. If not, we have don't know the item on the side of uh, Iker's Fini. And maybe that's why he's so confident about, you know, um, leaving his Fini on the field and just splitting his targets as well. Unless he's also a choice max Fini, we're about to find out. As his health drops below 25%, and I gets a special attack, attack drop, but he does have the berry there. Unfortunately, the special attack drop is going to come back to haunt him, I think. I mean, that, that sort of incentivizes him to switch out because now... There's going to be another avoid from uh, Ikus, Ikus, uh Tapu Fini. So, he's going to at least avoid further stat drops. Yeah. As, yep, the Tailwind does reset for Ikus side, allowing him to roost again next turn. Mm. Assuming he survives the Moon Blast though. I, I, think, I think he can. Wizicott is at minus 2. And uh, the, the Mandy Blast does have an increased special defense as well. And Wizicott does go down there. Though, so, then he able to bring in his last Pokemon. Maybe the Celesteela? Yeah, and I, I guess Tapu Fini is sort of like incentivized to switch out with all the accuracy drops, with the special attack drops. And drop. he doesn't switch out now, he's not gonna get. Actually, he can't switch out anymore. Oh no, sorry, I guess uh, Tapu Fini yeah, can't switch correct, out now. Correct. So I'm not Danny's sure Tapu Fini is gonna be locked into Muddy Water for the rest of this game. Yeah, I, I, I think that's fine. Uh, the, the Fini doesn't have any more recovery. It, only, it is the Garchomp. Okay, but no Tectonic Rage, he's already used that on the Whimsicott. So, um, Danny down to his last two, maybe Rock Slide? Sort perhaps of a Hail Mary. Perhaps, perhaps a Scarf Garchomp on Danny's side. Ooh, Rock Slide could, could make things difficult for Iker here. I think he has to Rock Slide because if he is Scarf, he cannot afford to lock himself into Earthquake. Yeah, it will kill his own Fini off. Since he is Choice Lock. Yep. Ooh, bit rough. Iker does have Arcanine in the back, so he can intimidate the Garchomp, which he is going to Yeah, at this point, do. Arcanine is kind of dead weight. Your opponent has the Garchomp and the Tapu Fini locked into Mighty Water. So Arcanine at least gets the Intimidate off. And if he survives, can even get another one off if he switches it out again. Hmm. And as Tapu Fini going to protect itself. We have seen the Snarl as well, so that's one way to reduce uh, Danny's damage output Yeah, Gashom going to use Rock Slide. Moving first, perhaps an indication of the Scarf though. No, there's nothing else if I outspeed it, naturally. Ooh, that's a lot of damage despite the That's actually not that much after the Intimidate. As Muddy Water comes off, connecting on the Arcanine, going to connect on the Arcanine. Another berry perhaps. <laughs> that's one way to season your dog. Oh, not even going to proc. Goes down. Yeah, it goes down to the Muddy Water. Danny's Tapu Fini having not suffered any special attack drops. And he far. has run out of Tailwind. So and now Gachom free to I think clear the field. Under Tailwind. Iker's Gachom? Iker's Gachom. You are yeah. not clearing the field with Rock Slide. <laughs> <laughs> well I I, I think Iker is gonna go for Earthquake here, switch out his Fini to the Mandy Bus. Yep, it's uh, a very clean switch there. Reset his the Tapu Fini stat drops, get the Mandy Bus in immune to Earthquake, and get rid of the Tapu Fini on the same turn. A bit, a bit risky though, because if Danny does have Scarf on Gachom, uh, the game is over because Tailwind outspeeds the Gachom. Hmm. Tailwind will allow Iker's Gachom to outspeed the Scarf Gachom, who is locked into Rock Slide anyway. Hmm. Okay, yeah, I think he's going for the play we mentioned. It's gonna be Mandy Bus coming back in. At this point, it's just. It's just once. Oh, it's gonna be Protect. So Danny not carrying the Scarf Gachom, so he's still in with a chance. So he's gonna lose his Tapu Fini this turn. And it might come down to Gachom's speed ties. 
Actually, no, it won't. <laughs> because the, the Mega Bus is just going to deal with it again. Yeah. Yeah. Here will hang on with a sliver of health and will fire off Muddy Water, connecting with both Mandy Bus. No special defense boost from the CSH she switched out will go down. Ooh. Surprise there. Den Dennis Tom Queen actually hanging on, but unfortunately, one more turn of tailwind for Ica. And, and Gachom has already used uh protect for the side of Danny. What move does Ica go for here? Do you, do you chance a miss with the rock slide or do you Oh he could easily protect the Fini and go for another earthquake. So no harm, no foul. Yes. Yeah, I think Danny recognizes the scenario he's in. Although he does still have a chance if his Gachom is faster. He just needs to stick around one more turn. And go for a double protect perhaps? Yeah. Actually no, if you assume the protect of is coming, I think you can afford to attack with your Gachom. Okay, he goes for the forfeit instead. Alright. Suppose then you know wanting to play what looked like a it looked he was gonna be long it was gonna be a long it was gonna be a long shot. Regardless. Yeah, he had to Gachom had to survive. I think Gachom had to get he's he's crit. The opposing Gachom dead to but by all means it wasn't an overwhelming victory. I, I would say maybe the odds were like 60-40. Danny definitely I think he had a chance. I'm slightly worried for Danny though, because he fired off the the Z normalium into the Mandibus, which is has no effect. Well, he wouldn't know that because the Gachom switched in to take the Giga Vorhoi, but which was immune anyway. But if you're if you're well, the rise in Z Normalium Music God can be attributed to it winning the world championships mm. under the command of Ryota. Mm. And he fired off the Z Normalium into Sam Bandalis Medibus in the finals. So surely you would have seen that. Well well I maybe he's trying to catch a, another switch in perhaps. Yeah, uh, the only the thing Gachom. I can think of is that he was hoping to catch a Tumble Fini coming in. Mm. But then like you pointed out, it becomes a twinkle tackle. So <laughs> Probably will trigger the berry on, on Iker's side of the field. Um, Unless he was expecting some weird combination of double switch. So he gets twinkle tackle onto the Gachom. But that would be an incredibly level Level 25 I, play. Uh, uh, I'm just going to go with Occam's Razor here. I think Danny doesn't know that that, prank, that Prankster is blocked by um, Dark types. So, well, maybe we'll see that in the second game if he decides to go for the same play. But he has to be a bit more careful with the use of his Z-move. Wasting it like that really kills off a lot of uh, offensive pressure on his team. And the Wizard God, I mean, it did, did do a fair bit of work with the Moonblast uh, damage here and there. Could have been better if the special attack hadn't been dropped. But eh? And do you think any changes here for Iker or does he go with the same lead? I don't think Iker needs to change much. He just needs he just he just needs to withstand the early pressure from Danny's side. Yeah, burn off that whimsy called Z move. Danny has to be a bit more careful. And he, uh, Danny needs, needs to not needs to not mindlessly sky drop into things. That was <laughs> clearly the mistake there. It's gonna be Gengar, so Iker making the change here, leading Gengar and Arcanine this time. And it's gonna be Wimsy got Gachom coming in for Danny. Immediately gonna be intimidated by the Arcanine. Yeah, but pretty good for Danny here. Both of Iker's leads are weak to Earthquake. Uh so easily perhaps uh, doesn't really have an earth oh Celestila, I guess. Gengar though Celestila. Does outspeed the Gachom, which means he might need tailwind up before anything happens. His Gach the Gengar might carry the Willow Wisp. Yeah, not only that, Slash Bomb I think is a definite one hit KO on the Wimsy here. Oh that's true. Wimsy God does have uh So if Wimsy just tailwinds and at least a few, I don't think that's too bad for Danny. Since he gets back in in Specs me in for free under Tailwind. Yeah, and Earthquake on Gachom cannot be underestimated here, even though it is intimidated. Ga Gengar's defensive prowess is not very yeah, well he could known. Have, he could still have the Tectonic Rage, we don't yeah. know that. Okay, he's switching out with Zikot, so not going for Tailwind, going for Celesteela instead. So it looks like an Earthquake will be coming on the side of Dennis. Uh, but Gengar body. revealing the Hidden Power Ice coming out onto the Gachom. If he is Life Orb, this is going to be a knockout. Oh, clean KO. No crits. Is this the Life Orb, Gengar? Uh, ah, it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, you don't have to get the kill. Gengar does need the Life Orb. <laughs> and oh, Flam oh, Blitz is going Celestia. into the Celestia slot. Not what Danny wanted to see. Danny clearly hoped to, or hoping to catch a Slash Bomb. Yeah, I, I mean, you think your Celestia can take uh, uh, Flare Blitz relatively well. I mean, it was only half HP. Uh, but <laughs> definitely not what Danny wanted. Yeah, he's ho definitely hoping to catch a Slash Bomb from the Gengar. Hoping that uh, Danny, uh, Iker would uh, tunnel vision onto the Wimsy Court. Yeah, maybe Since he gave him a bit of trouble last game. Yeah, maybe predicting the Arcanine switch out or going for something like a Snarl to reduce with his cause damage. And another play Danny could have gone for would be to switch out Gachom and switch in something with the rain and just fire off the Normalium Z. But um, didn't go for that. Instead, we will be seeing Whimsicott once again. Yeah, and if Danny has brought the terrain for his Whimsicott, he's only brought one of them. Since only one of his Pokemon is left at the back. It's probably either the Coco or the Tapu Fini. But now Gengar with the Life Orb. He's gonna... Yeah. He's He's trying to run all over. In fact, right now, Gengar 
can just sludge bomb with Whimsicott for the KO Indeed. and bring Danny down to his last two. Yeah, so he has, and even if Whimsicott gets Tailwind up, he's not that scary when one of the opponents is one of the opponents side of the field is the Celestila, which doesn't offer that much offensive Whimsic pressure. Whimsicott could protect. He has shown that move earlier. In which case, Flabish takes out the Celestila immediately. Yes, yes. So very difficult here, and Celestila withdrawing, not wanting to fight. And no. we will see Coco switch. Not something that enjoys Flare Blitz either. Yeah, but I, I suspect Umizuka is going for a Hail Mary uh, Z move. Giga Blitz Havoc, yeah. Yes, to try to take off something. Oh, it's going to be Protect. Okay. So Flare Blitz go into the, will go into the double Coco slot. Hmm. Yep. So from into the Umizuka Protect as Flare Blitz into the double Coco. I think Icon takes it. It's, it's just more free damage on the side of uh, Danny's team here. And uh, yeah, that's another that's an, another Flare Blitz will easily kick out. And between Gengar and Coco, which of the two monsters is faster here? Based on your knowledge Genga. of speed. Uh, Coco is definitely faster. Okay. Genga does sit at 110 base speed, while Tapu Coco sits at 130. So Danny might be able to launch a Even counter attack Tapu here. Tapu Coco is modest, actually. He still outspeeds Genga. Hmm. Good to know. So he can potentially counter attack here with the Wizzy Z Crystal. Danny has two KOs on the field, I think. Yes. With a Z Crystal into the Genga and a Thunderbolt into the Arcanine. Yeah, and Iker not protecting as well. So we should see a, perhaps a clean field. Yeah, Gigabo Havoc in the terrain. It's going to take out Genga here. As we do see the Gigabo have come out here, it's probably into the Gengar, the weaker of the two right now. In the terrain, it's gonna pick up the KO. Ooh, into the Arcanine! I hope it's. Uh, I already hope this KOs. Uh, oh, it doesn't. doesn't! It's gonna activate the barrier on Arcanine's side. I. I don't agree with the targeting. I think he had to target the Gengar there with the Gigabo Havoc. <laughs> and third party gonna disable the Thunderbolt as well, keeping Arcanine extremely safe on the field. That is uh, very unfortunate. <laughs> Life Orb reveal. Uh, oh, we didn't see Life Orb again, right? After Sky Drop. <laughs> Ooh, Giga Ball Havoc survived here by the Arcanine. Goes to show how bulky. Flare Blitz will take out Tapu Koko and leave the Celestia facing the Arcanine. And Arcanine is still not in range of a of a Thunderbolt, I think. Not even in terrain from Mimsicott. Hmm. Based on the damage from the Giga Ball Havoc. Could, could protect. Could protect. So. Oof. But that is, that is rough. Arcanine yeah, surviving. I think, I think Danny really made a mistake the targeting there. Should the have the stronger attack. I think even in terrain. With your life, life of Coco it still hits harder than the the, the Whimsicott. Uh, Even though Whimsicott is using a Z Z Crystal, thanks to Tapu Coco getting the same attack, the same type of attack bonus. Yeah, I think he thought that since the Z the Z move has a higher base power, he should be able to, you know, that that he maybe he recognized that, or he thought that uh, his Whimsicott Z Crystal was the stronger move, and then planned that accordingly. When in actual fact, it might yeah, not have it been. I really think it was the other way around. Tapu Coco with a life orb is still gonna hit Ooh, harder okay. than Whimsicott. Can I going to run away here and well Tapu Coco could easily clean up the field with Celestina here. Definitely. And yep, Celestina protecting. So Whimsicott should be able to free fire fire off a moon blast. It's gonna be Thunderbolt power. into the Gachom, yeah. Okay. And a discharge here from the side of Coco. So uh likely a choice specs uh Tapu Coco for Iker. Does he get paralysis as well? Nope, no paralysis there though. At this point Whimsicott, he Whimsicott doesn't care about paralysis. Although at this point, I think he has to because he has to press Moonblast now. Yeah, to get rid of the Gachon. I mean, what can Celestila do? I, I mean, at oh, this point... he's not even going to try it, looks like. Yeah, the electric terrain boosting the discharge, even though it's spread. Uh, and he has, does have Arcanine at the back, which he can't take out reliably anymore. So Especially since electric terrain is going to run out eventually. Mm. In which case, you're only using try attack on the Arcanine, which is um, not the greatest attack. So Iker takes a set, 2-0. What a clean victory here. Game 1 got a bit... Got a, got Game 1 was rather close with Tailwinds going up on both sides yes, and yes. Tapu finished trading attacks but Iker sees the momentum very decisively in Game 2. His leads definitely had a lead advantage mm. uh, by catching by catching the Danny's lead with the Musicon and the Garchomp. Yeah, the, the, the Gengar revealing the Hidden Power eyes as well totally just destroyed uh, Danny's Garchomp and uh, a lot of his momentum was killed right off the bat. Yeah, Iker definitely made a hurry on Danny adjusting his leads mm. with the Garchomp. And bringing the Gengar, which will easily take, get the one hit knockout I with I the I think life even off. if you don't see the Garchomp, that's fine because you are very strong against the Whimsicott, you are very strong against the Coco. So, a, a pretty good lead, unless maybe you expect to see a Celestila, but you do have Arcanine, you do have Coco to deal with that. Yeah, and it's adjustment you can only make in game 2 because you don't want to be throwing Gengar in freely when there's a, still the chance that the Garchomp is uh, Scarf. Mm. But so once, once he recognized that the Garchomp had Protect, didn't have the Scarf, then Gengar was free to pick up the KO. Not only that, because he used Protect, he also knows that the Garchomp is not a Salt Vested either. So the life orb hidden power eyes was gonna get the KO. Once he got, once he had that knowledge, he led, he led with two ground wing mons, <laughs> just to bait the Gachom to stay in. Got it to take the bait, fire off the hidden power eyes, and that was curtains for the Gachom.
yeah, even 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 if Garchomp didn't lead, perhaps he was baiting a Garchomp to switch in, then perhaps then he could fire off the hidden power eyes. Right, Danny to a false sense of security there. But you do really have to think back to that turn where Danny had two KOs on the field. I really do believe if Thunderbolt had gone into Arcanine and the Diablo had walked into the Gengar, Gengar, I think that picks up two KOs and the turn is very different. Mm, so Spiker didn't even try to switch in the Gachom to take an attack. Actually if you think about it, I don't do you think he needs the Z crystal to KO the the, 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 the Gengar in the first place? Uh, definitely. The th Thunderbolt in terrain though. It's and Gengar's it's not, it's not same type of deck bonus. Yeah, but Gengar's Gengar has decent special defense. Mm. It's a physical defense that is a uh, abomination. <laughs> Okay, so we I could will take the set. Um, first victory. Yep, he is. I, I believe he's also his first tournament of the season. Yeah. Of, of, for, for a while, I believe not just this season as well. Yeah, but I don't think Danny will be out because there is the patented, patented Danny luck where he has crawled back from um, a first game loss before. Oh uh, well, the a respectable position. It looks like the, 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 the Lone Ranger will plow on, and we wish him good luck and Iker as well. And we will be bringing Iker on for interview after this uh, set win. So stay tuned. And I'm joined by the victorious player in the first round of Swiss on stream. It's going to be Aika Marvin Gyocha. So first off, congrats, Aika. Yeah, thank you. So uh, I believe this is, is this your first time in Singapore? Uh, yeah, it is actually. So I uh, believe you are visiting, uh, you're studying in the region? Uh, I'm studying in Taiwan and um, yeah, uh, we want to visit Singapore once and then I see there's a Singapore Open, so why not combine it? So have you been playing a Taiwanese circuit as well? Um, yeah, but actually there was no tournament in Taiwan already. I only played this season like in Liverpool. And yeah, after that there was no tournament for me. So this will be the start of your season as well. Ex yeah, kind of, kind of. Yeah, very good start. Yeah, yeah, very good yeah, start yeah. Round one. <laughs> so going into uh, going into game one, when you saw Danny's team, would you do you have inkling that maybe the Whimsicott was the Z nature power? Yeah, yeah, I expected that actually, and um, that's why in, in turn one I thought like yeah maybe if I switch in Garchomp now I get really great momentum, and apparently he did go for the turn one Z move, so I was really happy about that, and yeah. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. The turn both, I think both games, your turn one, your turn one ran, ran really well. Yeah, yeah, actually. Um, in game one, my game plan was to figure out if it's uh, a Sword West or Scarf Jump, and after I knew it, it was projected, yeah. uh, exactly, um, Gengar had a really, really great matchup in this. And yeah, I think Life of life of Gengar is actually underrated, and it's so funny when you can KO Garchomp that like, basically nothing has happened in game two. Yeah, I think game one was a really strong bait on your part. You let both Arcanine and Gengar, two ground weak Pokemon. Yeah. So you're really yeah. tempting the Gengar to stay in, it really stayed in. Exactly, exactly. That, that, was, that was my game plan. I knew I'm faster and so there was no point that he can kill me and yeah, it, it went really well actually. Yeah, so in game one, I think there was a point in the game where I think both of you were trading tailwinds. But at any point, did you feel the game was out of your control? Or do you feel um, that it was, it was still yeah, in control of the Yeah, at the, at the actually, at the end of the match, I think like I didn't go for the offensive. I always tried to taunt the Whimsicott and all this stuff. And then I figured out he actually runs Nature Power and Moon Blast. So taunting was no, no use. Yeah. Uh, no use yeah. And um, I have, in like in the last three turns, I was a little bit concerned. And I knew I had to put out my damage right now. So yeah, but it worked. So I'm yeah. really happy. I think game one, it came down to use. You managed to set your tailwind up just in time. Yeah, so exactly. I always, I always, I always, I always, I always try to set my tailwind two turns after him. So then he protected, and I was like, okay, yet now it's the perfect time. And uh, it was really good that uh, that his Fini was locked into muddy water. Yeah, so definitely, because if it was moon blast, then you had two. Uh, exactly. You had, I think you had a Fini and many bars on the field, which wouldn't exactly, have taken exactly. it as well. Exactly, exactly. And Gartam in the back, yeah, yeah, moon blast would be really crucial. So I think were you surprised that he didn't switch out the Fini to reset the? Yeah, move? actually, I was surprised about that, and that's what like I think one time I went with Arcanine for Snarl, and I expected the Fini switch in, 
or switch out. Yeah, and I think we saw you go for the snow to the Yeah, in the whimsical card, exactly. I expected the Phoenix switch in, and yeah. But I think it was alright. So yeah, I think it worked out in the end. And game two, you made the adjustments, and you, I think you got yeah. a very strong victory in the end. Yeah, yeah. So, congrats in round one. Good luck yeah. for the rest of the rounds. Thank you, yeah. Alright, so, and we will see you for the rest for Swiss round two coming up. So, stay tuned. Okay, see you.